Once you regain your sight, it is very hard to go blind again. The programming and brainwashing run so subtly deep that we have all come to associate the notion of ancient with underdeveloped, less technologically advanced, and believers of mysticism. Consider the structures built throughout history. The ancient fortress of Oli Te Tambu in Peru. These huge stone blocks are made from granite. They weigh between 40 and 120 tons, or between 36,000 and 120,000 kilograms. The world record for the deadlift in the weightlifting world is 500 kilograms. So how did the Incas transport this granite to such a high altitude location? Look at the way the stones fit so neatly together like jigsaw pieces. How did they cut granite with such precision? Look beyond the stones. Who were these gigantic steps made for? And by who? Babalovo Palace and its bath. This bath was allegedly created from a 160 ton piece of granite. 160 tons is 145,000 kilograms. The bath structure today weighs 48 tons or 43,000 kilograms. They say it took the artist 10 years to create. But look how perfect its curved structure is and the upper rim of the bath. Yeah, right. No matter what fabrication they attach to this, creating such a structure by hand is impossible without advanced machinery. Alexandra Column Erected in 1834, the column is a single piece of red granite. It weighs 600 tons or 540,000 kilograms. Again, how did they lift this in the 1830s and how was it carved to such perfection? Look at the intricacy displayed in the statues of Capella San Severo. These were allegedly crafted in 1753. It is obvious this is not handcrafted. Cutting through a single piece of pure marble with such perfect precision and attention to micro detail is impossible without some kind of advanced machinery. History as we know it is a lie. These all point to civilizations with advanced technology. The photographs of Stonehenge and the temple of Abu Simbel tell us to be skeptical of other historical structures such as the pyramids. It is likely that the pyramids are not as old as we are told and they could have been constructed by anybody and at any time during history. It is likely that they were all constructed more recently with two primary purposes in mind. To deceive us and as a ritualistic place of worship, honouring their satanic gods. The first power tool, we are told, was not invented until 1895 and the first electric lamp in 1879. 
So how was this architecture crafted and constructed? It is so obvious this is not the truth. If you really look at all the cities of the world, you can see their stone structures and design would have actually been impossible if we are to believe the fabricated pre-industrial narrative and timeline. There is an abundance of compelling photographic and structural evidence suggesting that the civilizations of the world experienced a cataclysmic mud flood in its recent history, which buried many cities. Cities with architecture built with advanced technology and that ran on free electricity. There also exists evidence of a worldwide nuclear war somewhere between 1780 and 1815. It all points to an early 19th century worldwide reset through depopulation. We also see old photographs of nigh on deserted cities and of birthing stations and orphan trains, suggesting they needed to repopulate large areas of the world at some point. It is likely that a lot of 18th and 19th century culture was designed to program and indoctrinate false history into these children. This is a topic to explore outside of this series, but it all suggests that our history has been heavily edited, timelines distorted and corrupted. The Mandela Effect. Why do you think it was so easy for the Rothschilds to rise to power? Were they just really adept at manipulating the financial world? It is very likely that the rise of the Illuminati and the Rothschild banking took place against a different contextual background and much earlier in history. The Napoleonic War is likely a fabrication and the war in which the Rothschilds came to power was a different kind of war. It is also highly likely that Tesla's story is not entirely true. It seems more accurate that he actually rediscovered free energy and that's why it was suppressed immediately and not given a chance. It seems very convenient that photography was not officially invented until 1822. Are we advanced today? Yes, we have computers. But look at all the wires. Our infrastructure has not actually progressed. Trains, cars and planes, in principle, are the same as they were when they were invented.
Aesthetics and slight improvements in speed give the illusion of progress. Control and manipulation, both necessary as we advance technologically because technology exposes their lies. Advanced cameras expose the lies of space. That is why the key methods for discerning truth from lies is to trust our own eyes, senses and judgment over narrative. There is zero evidence of the heliocentric model on earth and to follow the people who run our world, follow the money, follow the bloodlines, follow the symbolism and follow their fear. When they suppress, when they scream hoax, when they smear, we must dig and examine. The question burns. Who or what cut down our giant trees and mined the earth? And where did all the mined material go? There are a handful of possible conclusions we can draw from studying the geological nature of our flat earth. The first is that whatever beings mined earth were undeniably more advanced technologically, industrially and intelligently than the human species. The second is that they were obviously much larger than us as a species. You could reconcile the possibility that they were humans like us, but just technologically more advanced and had developed the machines capable of committing such actions. But this is very unlikely. Mythological stories of giants abound in our culture. And these tales can be found in every single culture throughout history. In the Christian and Jewish biblical texts, we find accounts of the Nephilim, in ancient Greece and Rome, we have giants and titans. In the Quran, we have the people of Ad. Giants are present in scripture, mythology, oral history, folklore, literature and movies. The Book of Enoch speaks about fallen angels or the Watchers, beings that came from a realm above the firmament and began to interbreed with humans. And they became pregnant and they bare great giants whose height was 300 L's who consumed all the acquisitions of men. And when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish, and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. The canonical Bible gives us the same account, this time naming these giants as the Nephilim. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and afterward. During that time, the sons of the true God continued to have relations with the daughters of men. And these bore sons to them. They were the mighty ones of old times, the men of fame. The land that we have gone through as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people that we saw in it are of great size. There we saw the Nephilim 
And to ourselves we seem like grasshoppers, and so we seem to them. It would be naive to think the ancient texts have not been edited, or books of scripture hidden. The Vatican Apostolic Archives are highly secretive vaults containing thousands of texts inaccessible to the public. Even Wikipedia gives credence to the enormity of these vaults, stating that they contain 53 miles of shelving. What is important to remember is that the biblical texts also contain chronicles of their God, of their Lucifer. The deeper you travel down the rabbit hole, the more these texts surprisingly align with the reality of our world and offer insight much better than any corrupted field of science. The Nephilim, we are told, were the nuclear weapon of Satan, full of destruction, wickedness and corruption. They corrupted human genetics and were destroying the earth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. And in those days Noah saw the earth, that it had sunk down and its destruction was near. And all the fountains of the great deep burst forth and the floodgates of heavens were opened. This is the story of the great flood that God created to rid the earth of the Nephilim and save humanity. Noah survived because he was the only human whose genetics had not been corrupted by the Nephilim. The great flood myth can be found throughout all cultures, including Hebrew, Hindu, Babylonian, Norse, Chinese, African, European, Mesoamerican, Mesopotamian, and Australian Aborigine. This is the same satanic method of deception we see with the many names of Lucifer throughout cultures. There is one true historical account of what happened before and during the Great Flood, but the account has been mythologized and fragmented in order to deliberately deceive and confuse. People are less likely to gravitate towards mythology when the scientists are pushing mathematical bamboozlement. The geological and natural world cannot be edited. The truth only suppressed and manipulated through narrative. These wonders provide undeniable evidence of large-scale mining of earth. They fear us discovering the anomalies, the pieces of history they cannot cover up or overlook when creating their false narratives. Advanced cameras prove that there is some kind of water surrounding our firmament above and the tremendous mining of land under the oceans indicate that at some point in our history, the earth was indeed sunk down 
and being destroyed by a species much larger than humans. Impact craters are found everywhere. There are 190 spread across Earth. We are told they are caused by debris and meteorites from outer space. But look closer. Any geologist worth their salt would immediately ask the question, where is the remaining meteorite rock? If a meteorite of 160 foot in length crashed into Earth, then where did it go? Of course, they tell us that the meteorite mostly vaporized upon impact due to its speed. The same story over and over again. Claims that no one can actually prove. Continually putting all our faith in the priests of atheism. What are these craters? They do not appear to be quarries. There is no stepped, tiered patterns of barbaric gutting. Perhaps some were old excavation sites. But look closer at the circular, upturned rim of these craters. Now look at another wonder of our world. Geysers. Springs that occasionally eject turbulent torrents of water. Can you see it? The same upturned edges form from the release of water pressure. There were not oceans on Earth during the Silicon Era. It's interesting how some impact craters appear to be flooded. And while others show vegetation growth in the center, most likely from the moisture. As you can see, right in the middle is the opening in which the water comes up from and releases into the air. We can see traces of the old closed opening in the crater. The microcosm and the macrocosm. In the biblical model and ancient stories of the great flood, the waters came from above as the vaults in the firmament were opened and from below, from a place called the Great Deep. The Great Deep in the biblical model is not the oceans. The Great Flood rid the world of the Nephilim and it's possible that it was the waters from the Great Deep that filled the huge excavated land with what's now known today as the oceans. The vast amount of carbon in the atmosphere from the mining then influenced the direction of growth of all the life that followed. There are many well-recent documented accounts of nations' governments intervening in archaeological digs and discoveries. Many have written extensively about findings that directly contradict the mainstream narrative of humanity's historical geological timeline and challenge the Darwinian narrative of evolution. All figures have been victims of extensive media, governmental and scientific smears and desperate attempts to debunk and discredit. The scientific priests are always successful 
in stifling these voices and suppressing their discoveries. One of the most interesting of these figures is Richard J. Dewhurst, whose book, The Ancient Giants Who Ruled America, The Missing Skeletons and The Great Smithsonian Cover-Up, examines why the various giant skeleton discoveries made by archaeologists were silenced and erased from the official historical narrative. The idea of giants or of the Nephilim existing in our past seems stranger than fiction. Our satanic matrix programming kicks in and the immediate reaction is to dismiss. But we have already accepted a very similar natural history, a corrupted half lie. They've already told us that giants once roamed the earth. But in the form of these, we all know these. And it was a meteorite that supposedly wiped this species out. Can you see how they have corrupted a real truth and told us in their indirect way? Dinosaurs probably did exist but not in the narrative or timeline they've given us. In a world of enormous silicon trees, there would be so much oxygen in the atmosphere. Because of this, living life would grow to immense heights and sizes. All life back then was a lot bigger than it was today. Because of the oxygen, living creatures would also have lived much longer lives, some for hundreds of years. If giants did once exist, then why lie and hide it from us? Simply because it completely destroys the theory of evolution. It is no secret that Charles Darwin's grandfather Erasmus Darwin was a Freemason, as was the entire family's male lineage. Erasmus was not just any Freemason, he was a 33rd degree Freemason, the highest rank of the organization. The number 33 is highly satanic used throughout their symbolism and rituals. Not only do the numbers produce their beloved six when added together, but 33 is also a direct allusion to the age Christ was when he was crucified, always mocking that which directly opposes their God. Darwin's theory of evolution is just that, a theory. The double standards are outstanding. Darwinism has always carried the title, the theory of evolution, just like gravity is the theory of gravity. But their scientific theories are forced upon us from birth and taught in our education systems as truths. When a conflicting theory arises, they are usually classified as conspiracy or pseudoscience. We need to wake up. The fact remains that Darwin's theory of evolution has never been proven. Just like gravity, we do not actually witness evolution taking place. There is literally no evidence of species evolving. 
We just have to have faith that at some point, millions of years ago, it took place. They have never found the missing link between humans and monkeys. And all subsequent militant work by figures such as Richard Dawkins and David Attenborough is nothing more than satanic programming and propaganda. I too was brainwashed by Dawkins, the God delusion, a stupid mistake. Throughout the last century, scientists have desperately tried to find proof of evolution, enforcing so-called discoveries to the point of invention. They have claimed to have found a jawbone of the missing link, what is referred to as the Piltdown Man. For the next 40 years, scores of scientific articles, artistic reconstructions, and over 500 doctoral theses were written on this subject. But in 1953, Tests proved conclusively that the Piltdown skull was actually human and only a few hundred years old, while the lower protruding jaw was from a recently deceased orangutan. A deliberate hoax. They lie. The 33rd degree Supreme Council of Freemasonry was held in Paris. Revealed in the minutes of their meeting is their promotion of evolution as science, while they themselves mock the theory. The minutes read, It is with the scientific theory of evolution in view that we are constantly by means of our press, arousing a blind confidence in these theories. The intellectuals will puff themselves up with their knowledge and without any logical verification of them will put into effect all the information available from science which our agenteur specialists have cunningly pieced together for the purpose of educating their minds in the direction we want. Do not suppose for a moment that these statements are empty words. Think carefully of the successes we arranged for Darwinism. Darwinism had two objectives. The first, to dislocate the notion of creation as a real possibility, much like heliocentrism. And the second, to create social Darwinism, the idea of superior races and social classes, propelling humankind into some false belief that they must succeed and beat all competition. Social Darwinism became one of the driving ideologies behind fascism, communism, capitalism and eugenics. It is in direct conflict with the teachings of Christ. Real consideration needs to be given to the reality of the Luciferianism at the heart of the entire social, economic, cultural and historical fabric that governs our everyday world. Real consideration needs to be given to why such evil is being committed to children on a grand scale. A select group of very rich, elite people who also happen to be psychopaths is one thing. But this is more than that. The crux of it is this. 
Lucifer worship, satanic slave control of the human population and crimes against children could exist without the need to deceive us with heliocentrism. The fabrication of heliocentrism comes with great risks for the satanic cabal as our own personal technology advances. People are waking up and questioning the narrative. The spell that they cast over us years ago is slightly losing its grip. They are hiding something. Perhaps a source of good, a creator, prophecy, of a land. We are their slaves. They continually lie to us, committing crimes against humanity in the name of their Lucifer, while we are kept slaves, making them rich and supporting their twisted democracy. The possibility of other lands and planes of existence that they control or are controlled by is very probable. Whether accounts of the Nephilim are truly accurate, it is not possible to say. Admiral Byrd did state that there is land beyond the South Pole. Old maps written off as a hoax or inaccurate show other land, extra territory. The vast amount of material mined from Earth and our old gigantic trees had to go somewhere. It is very possible that they have discovered a way out of the firmament at Antarctica and are able to leave. It's also possible that there are other concentric ice walls and Antarctica is just the first one and the foundations of the firmament lie way beyond. But there is a problem. They can only traverse this plane. They have never been able to go above or below and that is their goal. The more you look closer, the more troubling it becomes and the more it all aligns with the Christian biblical texts. Ye are of your father the devil and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Lucifer has always been clear on his ultimate goal. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. The Tower of Babel, the story on how the different languages of the earth came to be. Nimrod, a Luciferian gigantic king, built the tower to reach up upon heaven, to reach the firmament and be like the Most High. God saw what they were doing and broke the tower and scattered all people over the earth and divided them by different languages so they may not attempt this again. The Broken Tower of Babel The European Union Parliament Building In direct opposition to what God said not to do Unite all nations the EU, a branch of the United Nations. Our minds programmed and manipulated by the media 
to think this could ever be a good thing. Union of all, a utopian lie to advance the Illuminati satanic agenda of a one world government. Their new world order, Novus Ordo Seclorum, the uniting of nations under one government, under one world currency, one world military, one world religion, the end goal, all potential threats to their system dissolved, complete control over the human slave species. A new world order. 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 And a new world order. 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 A world order. A new world order. As I've told you before, because I love it so much, Novus Order Seclorum, a new order for the centuries, for the ages, forever. The international order. Global governance. Global governance. Global governance. Global society. Global influence. And people talk then, in 1990, of a new world order. The reference to the Tower of Babel signals another motive, a more sinister one. Lucifer's goal to ascend like the Most High. They have been trying to breach the firmament for years. Operation Dominic and Fishbowl were attempts to nuke the firmament. Although we weren't able to shatter that highest, hardest glass ceiling this time, thanks to you, it's got about 18 million cracks in it. The mysterious Libyan desert glass Scattered over hundreds of kilometers in the Sahara Desert This mysterious glass puzzles scientists Some theorize that it is formed from nuclear explosion The glass is nigh on pure silica and is so strong it has a melting point of 1,600 degrees. Crystal remains. But of what? The trees? Maybe not. How many cracks did she say are in the firmament? This didn't always share the same name with a chocolate bar. Those before us called it the Great Rift. The ancient Greeks said it was a great path of destruction left by Phaeton, who tried to guide the chariot of Helios, the sun god, across the sky and lost control before being struck down by Zeus's lightning. They've been trying to breach the firmament for thousands of years. The great rift, the scarring of their barbaric failed attempts. Glass of pure silica, a silicon dome, a semiconductor separated by the waters, the electrical conductors powering the luminaries through vibrational electromagnetic energy. They use quantum physics to articulate the properties of semiconductors. They call it the crystal lattice, the description of atoms, ions and molecules in crystalline matter. Look at a crystalline lattice hexagons look at the atomic structure of the lattice the hexagon and the cube the crystalline unit cell of the cube is the most common shape found in crystal what do they know 
What energetic field of darkness are they worshipping, giving their energy to and sacrificing children for? And then there is this. They are doing it right now while we sleep. CERN The Large Hadron Collider This is the world's largest and highest energy particle collider and the largest machine in the world. They are in search of the Higgs boson particle to prove the Big Bang and to understand the nature of dark matter and black holes. All lies. Look at CERN's logo. 666. Do you remember the ritual that was filmed at CERN, located on the border of France and Switzerland? Shiva the Destroyer. The same symbol adorns the boardroom of the World Health Organization. The World Wide Web was invented here at CERN. 666. Look at the dance opera they put on to celebrate the opening of this. These are supposed to be scientists. This is a ritual full of Luciferian imagery. Lucifer, oh how you fell. Look, Shiva's dance of destruction. And the fifth angel sounded and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew tongue is Abandon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Apollyon, Apollo again, the moon landing missions. The town in France where CERN is located is called Saint Gen Pulley. The name Pulley comes from the Latin Apolliosum, and it is believed that in the Roman times a temple existed in honor of Apollo right here where this French town is situated. And the people who live there believe that it was a gateway to the underworld. What did God banish to the bottomless pit? The souls of the Nephilim. 
You've seen this geometry before. The eight spoked wheel. It is the wheel of time. Controlling and distorting time and space. They are openly telling us what they are doing. The key to the bottomless pit. They are trying to open a portal to another realm or bring something out into our realm. The bottomless pit. They are trying to let something out and the Pope is ready to welcome extraterrestrials. The sculpture in the Vatican is called Resurrection. Does this look like Christ to you? They are trying to resurrect something, but it is not Christ and they are not aliens. The whole alien deception has been programming us from the beginning to accept something other, some kind of life that is not human, but something else. Look at the satanic symbolism at the ceremony dedicated to the opening of the Gotthard Tunnel in Switzerland. This was put on by CERN. Did you really think it was just a stupid Netflix series? And look who it is. Up to no good. Alice. Desperately trying to go into or get out of Wonderland. They are telling you what they are doing with Alice. Trying to go down into the rabbit hole. Into the bottomless pit. Through these experiments, they discovered something called the Rainbow Universe and Rainbow Gravity. More nonsensical bamboozlement concealing what they are really looking for. Return to ancient Norse cosmology. Can you see it? A rainbow bridge connecting our flat earthly plane, which they called Midgard, with another realm, a realm underneath. You did not notice the enormous trees before, did you? Heed it now. The underworld they called Hell and Niflheim. Niflheim is very similar to the word Nephilim. Hell is the same biblical hell or what the ancient text called Sheol. The Rainbow Bridge also connects to Valhalla, the city of Asgard, or what is known as Heaven, a path to ascend to the Most High. It doesn't matter if you cannot move beyond your programming to conceive this as a real possibility. It doesn't matter if you believe in it. What matters is that they do believe in it and they rule and own you. Stranger than fiction, a paradox. The deeper down the rabbit hole, the more upside down everything becomes 
and yet it all starts to make sense. Do you understand the enormity of their lives? The human slaves of earth being fooled into thinking they are a random product of coincidence on a lonely rock. Learning this at such a young age and never giving it another thought. Fed to the brim with Hollywood fantasy movies so the actual world lost its colour. Their spirituality denied the truth of good and evil denied, any chance of living a life of righteousness replaced with the satanic worship of materialism and debased Darwinism, and all the while their masters, the cult leaders, are desperately trying to bridge realms and ascend from this plane to the most high. What will it take to wake humanity? While they are sleeping, this is happening. The tower is being rebuilt and the little freedom we had to begin with is vanishing. The dawn of their new world order is coming. But I know you've stirred, viewer, and I'm grateful for it. Now is not the time to lose faith. We have to tumble down one last rabbit hole before I let you go. What I am going to show you should restore your faith and hope. Come on now, our final stop has arrived.